right, this is 30 miles an hour. That is an incredibly sharp corner. Let's see if we fall over. Yep, it's 2CV land, we. <laughs> oh, you've got to love a 2CV, haven't you? Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and today I'm at 2CV Shop, the home of all things 2CV. Now, you may have seen, in fact, I'm sure you will have seen, 2CV EV, the electrically converted 2CV, they've been working on for a little while. Well, they've done it again. They've taken it to a whole new level with a second prototype, which is perhaps even more interesting. They've done a commercial version of the 2CV as an electric vehicle. So this is EV, the 2CV EV CV. Let's take a look around. The 2CV went into production in 1948 and carried on 42 years until 1990. That is an astonishing run in production, which makes it one of the most iconic and identifiable, recognisable cars on the planet. It's up there with things like the Mini and the Beetle, the, maybe even more famous than the Renault 4 and 5. But these new versions take everything you're familiar with and move it into the new millennium. Everything on the outside is standard, traditional 2CV fare. So the things we know and love about the car are still there. We have the, well, obviously 1940s style, separate fenders we've got the little protruding headlights the cheeky grin and the overriders the suspension is all 2cv nothing has changed there so we're very much keeping the character of the vehicle with its skinny little three stud wheels and of course tiny door handles and roll up windows all the good stuff is still there but being a commercial, instead of having rear seats, we've got a rear tub, a van back. The front of the car is all metal and it is in fact all new parts apart from the glass. The rear part is a slightly redesigned on the inside fiberglass van part, which gives you a bit more than the standard thousand litres that the traditional metal petrol driven 2CV commercials got from the factory. So before we take a look at the gubbins that make the thing go, let's take a look at the van itself in its interior and some of the things we're more familiar with. So first of all, the door card is unchanged. It's, it's all black vinyl, we've got a little door pull at the top and the tiniest, weeniest little door handle you ever have seen. Nothing's changed from the regular car. Here is the door locking mechanism here at the back. Inside we've got the vinyl seats. We have got inertia rail seat belts, which is good. We've got a regular 2CV steering wheel. As far as the tea shelf goes, there isn't one. To carry your own tea and hope for the best. Our dashboard area does have two air vent areas, which will have motors on both of them, so we do have proper demisting in the winter time, which is good. And the control area is fairly spartan. There are a few extra little lights and things that tell us stuff. First of all, we have our handbrake, nothing's changed there. We've got our gear shifter, but we use this in a slightly different manner. If you look over here at the guide panel, we've got second, third, fourth, and AR, which is reverse. First has been blocked off because that would damage the electric drive. What you do is you select second or third, usually just third, and pull away in that and just leave it there. Around the dashboard, we have our few standard controls. Hazard lights, normal. Brake check for the brake fluid. Our fan controls, turn our blowers on and off. Wipers and washer. It looks like a bit like a launch the missiles button, of course. Down here on the right-hand side, quite significantly, we have our battery gauge, which hopefully will tell us we've got a nearly full battery. It does. So that is now the van turned on and ready to go. That is it idling, um, with the, thankfully with the handbrake on, so I'm not going anywhere. Moving back slightly, we have got our indicators. Left and right turn there. This is a prototype and this is a left-hand drive indicator stalk. When the right-hand drive indicator stalk comes into stock, that won't collide with that. Over here we've got our light switch and a horn. Wow, that's, that's quite a bleaty parpy actually. Curious. Now finally on the controls front, we've got three pedals, but we never use the clutch. That almost needs to be disconnected because you can actually damage the drive system if you use that by mistake when you're driving. But you have the throttle and the brake. Drive it like an automatic and pretend the clutch isn't there. We do have a lower T-shelf, so you can put snacks aplenty down there. There's a lot of room for any items you want to pop on there. That will all sit happily. And headroom, headroom is just ridiculous. You might as well be in a convertible size of this. You can have a stovepipe hat if you really wanted to. 
Let's have a look in the back and then I'll show you under the bonnet. So as I say, this is a fiberglass tub, which gives you a little bit more space because the wheel wells are more compact. So you've got a larger, wider area for stowing luggage and items. It's fully carpeted and there are little lights above us, but this is the thing you want to see. This is the 11 kilowatt battery lurking here behind the seats sitting here in the middle of the van so we've got great weight distribution. This is an 11 kilowatt battery but there will be the option to have two of these stacked in here so you can have double the range if that's what you need in your delivery purposes. Very big, very useful. We like. So under the super lightweight bonnet we have got exactly the same power system as we have on our existing 2CV car. This is a system designed by the Mahari Club for those 2CV Mahari beach conversions and that means it's all gone through the French homologation system which means it's a very good system. So this is a 20 kilowatt 120 newton meter brushless DC motor and it sits in exactly the same place as the original petrol unit did even with the inboard discs still where they sat before. Sitting right in the front of the car in the airflow stays nice and cool and with the battery behind the seats the weight distribution has been homologated by those nice people in France to be close enough to how the original car would have been with the old style engine in it. This is still a prototype so there will be changes before the production model is finalised. Currently it has two battery chargers allowing for a three kilowatt charging. There will be a single one doing the same when it's done. There will be a pair of blower motors giving full windscreen demisting and who knows what else will change. It is quite strange though seeing things like the traditional gear linkage going into the gearbox then bolted onto, well, the big motor. So different. Now the main questions everyone asks when it comes to electric vehicles is how far and how fast and how quick can you recharge? And what you've got to remember with this thing is that it's intended as a delivery vehicle. It's going to be working in and around towns. So range and top speed are less of a factor. With that in mind, and depending what battery configuration you go for, because there are various options, and of course how you drive as well, that makes a big difference too, range is around 65 to 140 miles, which is a lot if you're driving around a city centre all day. Top speed is about 60 miles an hour, which is more than quick enough if you're driving around a city again. And then the all important recharge time. With a three kilowatt charger, this will recharge from 10% to 80% in about three hours. So you can be back on the road relatively quickly. Okay, running out a little bit of puff up this steep hill, but we are still in third gear though. Now the charging port is actually an interesting one. Because a lot of the work on this car has been done by the Mahari Club in France who do a lot of work converting 2CVs, Maharis and the like to electric already, we're using the plug on this van which is already used by that same car. So it's an unusual one we don't see anywhere else. But it does give 3 kilowatt throughput which is fine for this size of battery. Although it comes with a Euro style socket on it, plug it in the wall type plug, that can be adapted easily with the correct adapter to UK 3 pin plug or more usefully to a Type 2 adapter so it'll plug into a, any 7 or 22 kilowatt charger and charge at 3 kilowatts still. And of course it does have some regenerative braking as well so you can claw back a bit of range with your deceleration and your braking. Though not as much as with an AC motor and an inverter but it's a very lightweight and simple system which keeps things good. Keep it simple stupid. As a prototype this is based on an existing car's chassis so they've built up from an old chassis but with all new components being 2CV shop they have everything on the shelf brand new so it's a new cab it's a new fiberglass tub everything metal ahead of the bulkhead the only thing original in the body structure is the glass but once full production begins they are planning to use new chassis and build everything brand new from the ground up mean production going through IVA and with a limited run of up to a couple of hundred vehicles a year. Now I know a lot of people are incredibly unhappy at the thought of a classic car being converted to electric and losing as they call it its soul 
And to a certain extent, I can understand that and I can see where they're coming from. If you've got a car with a particularly charismatic engine, uh, like some kind of special V8, an Alpha Twin Spark, and there are lots of them that I could mention. I can see that, but... But if the engine in that car isn't the key feature of it, and in this case I would say the handling and the styling and the way the thing goes down the road and feels as you twiddle the wheel around, that's what makes a 2CV a 2CV, not necessarily... The air-cooled motor does have a lot of character, but this has got a different character all of its own. And more to the point, if they're building these things from the ground up with new parts, then you're not depriving a classic car of its petrol engine. You're building a new car which is identical to an old car, apart from the fact that there's zero tailpipe emissions and it doesn't need dinosaur juice anymore. Production is intended to start in the second quarter of 2023 with first deliveries around May of that year. They're not taking deposits, but they are taking letters of interest and the price tag is gonna be around 39,950 plus VAT because it's gonna be businesses buying these things after all. Our VAT is reclaimable. So if you are seriously interested, do get a letter off to 2CV shop and they can add your name to the list. And the thing with this van is that yes, it is a fairly large amount of money, but it is a statement piece. It says a lot about your business and who you are and how you do business. And it's an attention grabber as well because how many other businesses are gonna have an electric 2CV turning up at customers or outside their premises? It really does. Well, it just grabs everyone's attention and let's face it, it makes people smile. Now, if there's one thing a 2CV is known for, it is body roll. Let's whack it through this corner and see how it goes. That is so much fun. Do you know what? I don't even miss the uh, air-cooled petrol in this at all. It's kind of got similar performance. It feels like it's got the same weight distribution, which apparently they tell me it has anyway. I'm really enjoying this. This has got everything going for it. So this is it. So this is the most unusual electric commercial vehicle you're likely to see, certainly this year. If you've enjoyed this review, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join me again next week driving something completely different.